It is Friday, January 5th. Let's talk PlayStation. Welcome back, everyone, to another New Year, New Me episode of LTPS, and let's begin, as always, with our not-so-new reminder for PlayStation Plus Essential, where the January 2024 games are now live on PSN, so go ahead and claim those, add them to your library, and let's begin with another 2024 relevant uh, news story, which would be Sony uploading a brand new uh, montage trailer to their YouTube channel, and kind of like what we saw with Stellar Blade, where they didn't, you know, sort of make this a separate announcement, but in that blog post we now know stellar blade is confirmed for this year uh, so same deal here we've got uh, metal gear solid delta uh, snake eater and uh, silent hill 2 now confirmed as 2024 games because technically speaking we did not get release windows for those games at all uh, so now we can say somewhat confidently that they should be launching this year which i think was more i mean we knew silent hill 2 was probably going to come out on time uh, snake eater was maybe up for debate but still nice to you know i guess have some uh, reassurance that those games will be launching on time but uh, what we can also say about that trailer is that Concord is on there which we knew that game did have a, a release window for this year but that was still you know one PlayStation Studios game where it was confirmed and shown off a while ago with a you know a cinematic trailer that did not tell us anything about it but that is Firewalk's uh, new PvP first person shooter coming to PS5 and PC so that should still be on time and uh, we'll be finding out more about that game I would presume uh, soon. Uh, and also we did not see Death Stranding 2 on there, which that is very much a title where some are considering when we can expect that game, if it is going to launch by the end of this year, uh, or possibly be a 2025 game. But uh, we'll talk more about Death Stranding 2 and Kojima later in the show. Now, moving on to Bend Studio. Uh, we don't really have a whole lot to say here. <laughs> it's one of those things where like a few places did report on this, because it's like probably one of those like early New Year things where it's something to talk about. So uh, in this case, what we can say is that over on X, uh, somebody asked Bend how their new IP is going, and Bend did respond by saying, uh, simply, uh, we cooking. They are in the kitchen. They are working on that new IP. That is all we can say, and that's why there's really not much to, <laughs> not much else to discuss really. Um, I, I guess what we could add to this is that uh, I don't think it's really outside the realms of uh, you know possibility that we could maybe get a formal announcement about the project and what it is if they do kind of take that approach of uh, we're far along enough to where we know what this thing is, what it's going to look like, what's the mission statement or identity for this project because it is a new IP. Um, so at the very minimum they could maybe get that out there. Uh, but in terms of like <laughs> When it's going to ship, I think we're still very far away. This is very much going to be a late, uh, a late life cycle PlayStation 5 game. Uh, but still nice to have a very brief status update where they are in the kitchen and we gotta let them cook. Now something much more substantial would be we have some new details on the Horizon MMO from NCSoft. Uh, really the most substantial evidence of its existence because technically it's not confirmed, it's always been a rumor, uh, but now we've just got more evidence implying that it's very much a thing, which up to this point uh, we've had rumors about uh, possibly Guerrilla and NCSoft working on this in terms of a collaboration effort uh, or it's more NCSoft as a standalone thing, but recently we saw NCSoft and Sony made that formal announcement about their partnership and signing a contract. Uh, so now what happened recently was um, this was discovered by Kurakasas over NX where they've detailed some findings that give us the best idea of the project scope and also target platforms. So uh, what they found is that the game is presumably codenamed Project Skyline with a more finalized name possibly being called Land of Salvation. That's just speculation based on a domain registered by NCSoft and then looking at all their other existing projects. Uh, but now in a deleted LinkedIn post, we saw that the Project Skyline title was stylized in the Horizon font, which at this point is sort of a dead giveaway on what this is. Um, Right now we know that there's around 140 people that are working on this project uh, or they have been working on it since September 2023 and it's expected to launch later than NCSoft's other game, Ion 2, and that's expected between uh, sometime around 2024, so this year, uh, or 2025. The most interesting detail though is that job listings show no evidence of a PS5 version in development right now, just PC and mobile made via Unreal Engine 5 
which uh, I guess the really important distinction to make right now is that this is a different game from the in-house multiplayer uh, PvP, or I assume that's primarily PvE, but um, the other game that Gorilla is doing in-house, which is a Horizon multiplayer game. We saw leaks from that before where they're the more cartoony, uh, cartoony looking stylized characters, right? Um, and that's still all primarily out of context. We don't know what that game is really going to look like by the time it ships. Uh, but we've got two different games here, right? I mean, like, more than a year ago, we weren't entirely sure if this was uh, a collaboration between the two and we're talking about one game or if they're two separate titles. But uh, now we've got a, a really good idea of exactly what we should be getting here, which is a more traditional style, uh, I, I guess, combat from the in-house Horizon multiplayer game. And then this, which is going to be completely different, which... Um, that's the other point to make here immediately because I'm seeing some look at this and go, oh, this can't be true, right? They're not even making the game for PS5, which, well, I mean, full disclosure, <laughs> these are very real things. They're from job listings. They're from uh, what was available on LinkedIn at the time before it was taken down. So this very much is hard evidence about the scope and size and what the game is possibly going to be. But when, when we're talking about MMORPGs, I, that's a very different beast compared to the sort of, uh, you know, third person action combat that you might be shipping on a console, right? So when you're targeting PC, mobile, and of course they're not making it on Decima, so UE5, I mean, this this all completely makes a lot of sense in terms of um, how they want to go about making the game and then eventually shipping it on, say, PlayStation 5 and possibly PS6 based on the timeline, right? I mean, it seems like the uh, console version might be a really, <laughs> it might be really far out, so... You know, if we're talking about shipping the game and possibly 2026 and then, uh, you know, by 07, 08, assuming it's this long-term live service game, which very much for an MMORPG, that is what, that's what this could potentially be if the uh, player base is there to support it. They, it wouldn't be long before NCSoft gets PS6 dev kits and they start shipping a version of that. Uh, but the point I'm trying to get across here is that, you know, that kind of genre, you're, you're probably going to want to target... Uh, PC and, and mobile primarily, uh, and then whatever you have to do to make it more conducive to a console experience, in particular with UI controls. I mean, there's a lot of sort of headaches you have to get over uh, with that. So, I mean, really, this all sounds par for the course in terms of uh, what we should be expecting out of an, an MMORPG. So, um, yeah, it's not like there's really much to get excited about here, but it's just nice to have some clarity on what this game is it's you know now we know for sh uh for certain it's real um and now we can uh play the waiting game even more for uh new information about this game but also still the in-house multiplayer horizon game which uh, i do hope we hear about soon Next up, we have a spicy rumor for a possible Metal Gear Solid remake, which it would very much be the first game, not Delta, which we already know exists and everything like that, uh, which before that game was confirmed, you know, for a long time, there's always been a running rumor about uh, MGS1 getting remade, although it seems like for years there was never anything substantial backing that. And now we know today that we've got a collection with the, uh, well, principally the original game on there, but... MGS3 was the one with the remake. The point is, this rumor comes from Area Hugonis, where they're citing this as the same source that provided them info about the God of War Ragnarok DLC, which they had mentioned that source told them that this content would be shown off by the end of this year. Um, and they do also reference what I think they're, they're mentioning. This is the same source altogether that was telling them about the Ragnarok DLC, but also... Um, the uh, Metal Gear Solid games being remade as well. Well, rather MGS3, but also MGS1 as well. The point is they're putting out a brand new report claiming that MGS1 very much is real. Uh, well, a remake of the game and that Konami is, um, you know, beginning the process of getting that, that project off the ground. Uh, so there's not many people attached to it. Uh, but what they are also claiming is that I guess once Delta is shipped, then all the resources and backing is going into uh, remaking MGS1, which at least on paper, we know that Konami has like gone on record to say that, you know, based on the interest of these games, they can look at possibly doing more. But, um, you yeah, know, that's what they're saying so far. They're also claiming that uh, potentially it could be a PlayStation 5 exclusive, uh, which could probably amount to like time exclusivity based on, we know Sony likes to do a lot of that. Right. So, um, yeah, we'll have to leave it there for now. Rumor 100% label it as a rumor. Uh, but just based on, I guess, area who go nice and I'm trying to tie together all these sources. I thought it would be at least worth mentioning, especially if, uh, the story does, uh, this story does get picked up by more places. Right. So at least we're a little bit ahead of the curve because I think, uh, more places will probably report on this. 
Now, we also have a very minor rumor about Blue Point Games and what they might be working on, or rather, what we know they're not working on. That's kind of where this news goes, so you know, you have to take this for what it is, but this uh, comes from Shinobi602 on Reset Era, where, you know, Shinobi over the years uh, does not really comment too much on these things, but has been privy to uh, a few happenings at PlayStation Studios, and so at least uh, during this conversation about uh, Blue Point, what's going on, uh, this was a discussion in the PlayStation Studios OT, and so, you know, what are they possibly working on, and Shinobi just made a, a brief comment saying, neither, uh, with Angie asking, you know, are they working on either Demon Souls not sure about Bloodborne, he says, neither. So, because uh, that was a running theory for a long time, right? Is that maybe Blue Point is either working on content for a new Archstone for Demon Souls. Maybe they're doing that Bloodborne remake or a possible uh, sequel or something, right? That was a rumor from a long time ago from, uh, I believe that was Colin. So, um, this kind of goes back to something from what came out uh, what came out as part of the Insomniac Breach. Um, it's a, a slide that was showing off a bunch of uh, various PlayStation Studios. And the context here of why Insomniac would have this is that it would be a way to... It was like Sony, I guess, showing off and summarizing these other partner studios if Insomniac, say, wanted to outsource something to another partner PlayStation Studio. So each slide was showing off, um, you know, here's this uh, studio, here's what they're making, here's what they specialize in. Here's the head count at the studio. And uh, for Blue Point, there was a concept image on their, uh, their slide. And it shows uh, something that doesn't really look like Demon Souls or Bloodborne. It looks kind of like a and again, it's concept art. We're not displaying it. I'm sorry, but it's like a, it kind of looks like it has some uh, Egyptian to uh, undertones to it, right? In terms of the uh, setting, there's like two little characters in the uh, foreground. They're very small, but one's like holding a staff or something and uh, looking outward. It has sort of uh, fantasy vibes to it, but it has like the, the setting looks like it could be in Egypt or something, right? So people are theorizing what that could possibly mean, which I wouldn't speculate too far. Concept art is very much that concept art. It could be something that is never going to release. It could very much be a baseline for what evolves into something completely different. But the point is, uh, that's where we are right now with what Blue Point may or may not be doing. Is that um, somebody vouching for, hey, this is what they're not doing. And uh, I, it would be great to find out what Blue Point is up to uh, in the... I would love to say near term, but I still don't think that's a certainty, uh, but I do hope I'm wrong. Next up, Gran Turismo Sport has been officially delisted from the PlayStation Store, and we did not know that was going to happen. Uh, now, if we do go back to last year where we saw the announcement of the online servers, uh, those were going to get shut down this month, uh, January 31st, uh, and that's something where the servers will go down, but you can still play any sort of offline modes that are available in that game. Uh, but they did mention in that original announcement that the servers would get shut down, and also the DLC would get delisted. They did not say anything about the actual base game being delisted either, so uh, that just randomly happened. So now you cannot buy Gran Turismo Sport or any DLC on PlayStation Network, uh, but you can still play online until the uh, end of this month, which, um, you know, that's that's still fine. That's all well and good. Uh, but yeah, still surprising, and um, something where this kind of news story immediately goes into the uh, digital landscape that we're into nowadays, right? Uh, the sobering reminder of why digital is a, a pain and these pitfalls can happen and uh, all that all that good stuff. But I, I will say, I, I always like to at least remind people the in terms of like the context of this story, it's like I, I'm as much a physical media advocate as anybody else. Uh, so if you do want to buy the game today, then yes, your option is a pre-owned disc, which you would have many options. And that is the, the wonderful thing about physical media is that there is so much out there and you can usually find a good price or whatever the case is. Uh, but this doesn't mean you can't like play the copy you already bought. It, it simply means you can't buy it on PSN anymore. If you already bought it, you're entitled to play it, download it, re-download it for as long as that's conceivably possible uh, from Sony offering it on PSN where as long as there's a server you can sign into and, you know, it's still available on PSN. I mean, that's... I, if we... And here's the rough part too. I mean, we don't have... Uh, much of a historical timeline to look at in terms of what's the expected shelf life of, of being able to re-download content from PSN, PlayStation 3 is our litmus test. And as of right now, you can still re-download anything you bought from PlayStation 3, even when it was delisted. Well, 
I say that, but I'm sure there's some fringe cases or there's really a, a handful of things where that's been a problem lately when it comes to the PlayStation Store on PlayStation 3. There have been a litany of problems with that storefront, but uh, generally a lot of the content on PS3 is still, if you bought it, you can go to your download list and pull it, and that's something where that's ongoing 16, 17 years, right? So uh, just based off that alone, I mean, you're entitled to re-download the game for... Uh, more than a decade, we can safely assume. Having said that, yes, physical media, it's a huge fat W more often than not, and digital is going to have situations like this. Now let's talk about Death Stranding 2, because as we mentioned uh, from the montage trailer, it was not in there, so when can we expect this game? We still don't really have a, an answer there, but what we do have is uh, Hideo Kojima on X talking about all the projects he has ongoing for the uh, well for this year, and he's a very busy guy. It seems like he's doing a lot, which we know he is, uh, but he did say this, and I quote, uh, DS2 still has some ADR left, and we will start recording Japanese voiceovers. I want to concentrate on creating games, so I would like to limit my business trips, but I can't do nothing because I have to shoot for OD, collaborate with Avengers, make DS into a movie, and work on other video projects. So yes, he has a lot going on, but um, at least that's the status update for uh, Death Stranding 2, is that they're doing ADR stuff and um, uh, starting the Japanese voiceover. So at least with where they are on the project timeline, I mean, it seems like they're making good progress, and uh, it seems like it's on a path to be a 2025 game, which realistically, that is the case, I think, for a lot of the uh, PlayStation 5 library from, from not only first party, but a lot of third party studios as well. Um, there's, there's a lot of things that are well, we're getting a lot in Q1, but after that, there has been, I mean, it's kind of um, like a tumbleweed strolling through a very empty town, right? So uh, I think we're in store for a lot of games shipping next year, not necessarily this year. Moving on to what might just be a very small mention of a PlayStation 5 Pro feature that we've been discussing for a bit now, which is the possibility of AI machine learning, uh, which could be used for upscaling the image quality on PlayStation 5 games uh, to sustain higher frame rates, more reliable frame rates, right? So uh, it's more about managing the, um, the performance modes for a lot of these games going into what we assume would be a PS5 Pro setting. Uh, this revelation comes from, again, the Insomniac Breach. We won't display play the slide, but it was a slide that showed off um, a bunch of like key points and technical pillars in Marvel's Wolverine, uh, which that's where it may be referencing a possible PS5 Pro feature. So a few items on the in the bullet point list, they aren't really outside the norm. You know, there's things in there like dynamic lighting and foliage, uh, real-time global illumination, uh, having a 60 FPS performance mode, uh, motion matching, which we saw that technology in The Last of Us Part 1 for uh, a more fluid, realistic looking lo uh, locomotion but um, there was also a point on there where it just it simply said AI upscaling and in parentheses it says machine learning so again we kind of have to go back to like uh, what like how Sony will be presenting and marketing PlayStation 5 Pro when we look at PS4 Pro we can see how they went about doing that it was at a perfect time where uh, 4k adoption uh, or 4k TV adoption was on the rise and so it just uh, slot it, it was slotting in nicely with where the marketplace was with uh, being able to offer checkerboard rendering for a lot of those uh, those titles getting a 4k image quality on ps4 um, not having to wait for a brand new cycle to finally have 4k gaming on console uh, also at the time playstation leadership still felt strongly about you know trying to retain customers for the console market not embracing pc like they do nowadays but even still um with PS5 Pro, uh, with the advent of AI technology, and we've got things like DLSS, frame generation, uh, FSR, and well, some of these things have been a little bit sticky in terms of um, their their usability, like FSR, there's been a lot of complaints there. And so uh, at least with how Sony could approach this, right, and talking about what makes PS5 Pro uh, so much better and, and usable, right, or rather, you know, why this is a console that a dedicated PlayStation customer should get. It could be the uh, AI machine learning for, you know, being able to sustain these higher frame rate modes, not having to sacrifice that, but still getting a richer, uh, more 
refined image quality that looks close to native 4K because that's really what we're looking to get out of uh, uh, upscaling, right? Or AI upscaling in this case, which is we don't have to do native 4K. We can simply get a very similar, if not near identical, uh, near identical 4K image quality while still being able to hold higher frame rates or high frame rate modes if we can uh, push, you know, these games that are floating in the 80 to 90 range up to 120. There's a lot of possibilities, but I presume that's how Sony is looking to uh, market the machine uh, to what would be a, a very dedicated audience of PlayStation customers. It's still expected to be a low volume machine. They, they don't think uh, everybody's going to rush out and buy a PS5 Pro, but for those that will, that's what they're, um, you know, greasing their, uh, their hands up for. Next up, we have some regulator heat being placed on Sony where they were actually fined 13.5 million euros uh, in France where the uh, regulators in France have determined that uh, or they're claiming that Sony has made their licensing process uh, cumbersome and difficult to navigate uh, in relation to their controllers and more specifically PlayStation 4. So what they're claiming is that uh, the only controllers that reliably work on PS4 are the official ones uh, or officially licensed licensed ones. So with the licensing process that Sony has in place, they're making the argument that it's too cumbersome and difficult to navigate and try to sign up if you're a third party. And so they're deeming this anti-competitive. And so they've been fined 13.5 million euros. Now, I mean, I wouldn't know much about the uh, licensing process for their accessory division uh, in getting controllers, you know, up to in-house standards to where Sony's given them the, the okay and they can, you know, ship those controllers with the official PlayStation seal, uh, which gives you that okay as a consumer to know that the controller is going to work properly on the console. Um, you know, I don't know what that li that uh, that process looks like, but uh, if that means they loosen that up a bit and it's a uh, you know open to more companies, there that can't really be a bad thing, right? So uh, one of those things where regulators, it's great when they sort of step in and actually do something, but in this case, 13.5, kind of a drop in the bucket for Sony. Not sure if this is going to meaningfully change anything or or whatever uh, whatever the case is. Even more so, it's like this is my PS4. So this doesn't really apply to, say, PlayStation 5, where that, uh, well, at least so far, it seems like that's a much more stringent process where we don't have nearly as many third-party uh, DualSense controllers versus the DualShock 4, although obviously one console is a lot more mature than the other. Uh, either way, maybe uh, Sony will react and uh, make better changes, uh, although maybe <laughs> maybe they won't. I don't know. Uh, it's weird how this one issue even came out to begin with, but uh, again, if we see more of this stuff, I think uh, that can only lead to good for the consumers, which is always ideal. Now let's talk about CES, the Consumer Electronics Show in Vegas, where uh, Sony's press conference is on January 8th at 5 p.m. PST, so we will not have to wait too long for finally getting a new Sony press conference. Uh, and this is where we have to caution that, you know, CES typically is not a major PlayStation event. It is something where more broadly it's about the entire Sony group. And so, uh, and well, even more so like four or five years ago, PlayStation had hardly any presence at CES. Uh, although in recent years, that's not the case. Now they'll reveal the PS5 logo, <laughs> uh, give PlayStation VR 2 a name. They will announce, um, well, they did announce, I should say, uh, Horizon Call of the Mountain. So, I mean, there's things that do happen now, finally, when PlayStation's the breadwinner of your entire organization. It's more about what will we see in the coming days. Now, that's where it's really a toss-up, considering there's, it, it probably won't be a whole lot. I mean, generally, we will see that, um, you know, they're going to talk about camera stuff, uh, possibly AI, which will be insightful for uh, what they're going to do long term for that. But, you know, also like that's going to lean into metaverse stuff. I'm sure they're going to talk about for, well, a large portion of the event is probably going to be about the Afila, which is their Sony Honda mobility vehicle. Um, also Sony Pictures, which that does lean into, say, PlayStation Productions. So I'm more than certain we'll probably get uh, like an updated roadmap going on there. Maybe we'll get some new details on um, a project for PS Productions, whether it's a teaser or something new being announced there if you're into the, uh, the IP adaptation. So that will probably be the case. But in terms of what PlayStation will actually do, that's where like it really is who knows? What I will say is that, you know, some are thinking maybe we'll see PS5 Pro. No, that's not going to happen. I can assure you of that. Um, 
This is something, this kind of goes into like what they've done with like even just slim model revisions. That stuff does not get announced until much closer when that product is shipping. At least with PS5 Pro, we only have PS4 Pro to look at. That was something where it was a, a month delay from the announce to shipping that box. And that was where like day of, that was also PS4 Slim as well. But that shipped immediately like, or very close after when they held that conference. Point being, uh, PS5 Pro, which is like a, a new machine, which is worth considering buying right outside of a slim model revision, which typically you don't have to buy that if you already have a PS5. The point is they're not gonna wanna put that out there and possibly cannibalize some portion of sales uh, for PlayStation 5. It's just, that's way too soon. They're not going to talk about PS5 Pro. So what else could they do? Maybe something PSVR 2 related, uh, which would be nice given that, you know, the headset needs all the, uh, the air time that it can get. Um, maybe a game announcement or two, but again, that's not really the place where we typically typically see uh, actual game announcements, but it, you know, it's possible, right? We saw Gran Turismo stuff before. So I, I would just say temper your expectations, right? And anything that we do get, I think will be a nice bonus. Uh, it's still going to primarily be about all these other things that Sony is doing because Sony is not just PlayStation, even though um, in terms of the balance sheet, it's, it oftentimes is mostly PlayStation. Now, with all that said, it is time for Let's Talk Plus, the weekly Let's Talk PlayStation giveaway, where one of you can win a $10 PSN code. I would like to congratulate this viewer right here. I'll be contacting you very soon via email or X, and if you'd like to win a $10 PSN code, it is so simple. Follow the link down below, uh, enter the Gleam giveaway. Supporting this channel a number of ways can gain you an entry, and I'll announce the winner next week, because I'm trying to help pay for your games. Those are all the stories from this past week that I wanted to talk about with you all. And our Tuesday video was our annual PlayStation predictions discussion. So check it out if you have not just yet. I grade myself from last year and we give 10 new predictions for the PlayStation business for this wonderful 2024 calendar year that we are now in. Having said that, uh, let's do a brief update on what uh, what's going on with the channel, right? So what are we going to be doing uh, for this year? Uh, obviously a lot of what we typically do, but um, you know, I, I see the comments, the feedback, and uh, so I want to try and explore more of, uh, you know, some of the things that we were trying out as a test bed uh, last year, which would be, uh, you know, some of the retrospectives for older PlayStation 3 games, which is not, not exclusive to PS3. We can really do any sort of a PlayStation platform, but more of that, uh, filming with Terrell, which will be great if I can uh, uh, always get him he's just a really busy guy but maybe that more trophy stuff um yeah just uh trying out new things and expanding on those and i think uh we've got a really uh, a lot of exciting things that are going to be happening throughout this year so thank you so much for sticking around as always and i do hope you enjoy what we've got in store but until then that is it so that concludes this week's episode of let's talk playstation i'm ryan benecki thank you all so much for talking with me and i will see you all next friday